Amen. Good morning, church. God is good. And all the time. Amen. And today we get to hear the message of God's great love for us through music, song, and word, and musicians. And we are just so, so blessed. I want to make an announcement about Jillian Strachan is our violinist on record And in presence, she's replacing Jen Gordon, who had gallbladder surgery this week. So we welcome Jillian Strachan. You are in for a treat. Today is just amazing. I get to do round two. uh, And so we're just really, really blessed. Some announcements as we begin our worship today. Um, I got to look. I'm just so excited. Charge Conference today. Again, we're going to have a very exciting meeting. It's not a phrase you hear very much. Exciting meeting. But today we're going to have one at 2 o'clock here at the church. Our district superintendent, Reverend Mary Catherine Pierce, will be here to kind of guide us through as we make an official decision and have a church vote on moving forward with our building project. It's exciting that this church here that we're in, this building has been here about 10 years. It is completed, it's paid for, but we are ready for the next phase to have an education wing. And today we get to vote on that as a church and start to break ground, hopefully, in the spring. We're looking forward to that. Also, with that building project, we're getting ready for 2018. And just a reminder to send in or bring in your pledge cards, your estimated giving cards, as we try to continue to plan out for the ministries of 2018. And last but not least, we have our Christmas season services coming. Christmas Eve is a Sunday, right? Right. So we're going to have one joint service in the morning so that everybody can be together one time, 10 a.m. Sunday morning, and then Sunday evening we'll have three services, a 5.30, a 7, and a 9 o'clock. And all three services are very different, so I encourage you to come to one or all, and I know that you will be blessed. So without further ado, let me invite up the Cherub Choir, and let's continue in worship with their song this morning. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three 
ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. And what was in the ships of the on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day? And what was in the ships of the on Christmas Day in the morning? Please stand. <clears throat> when the angel of the Lord told a company of shepherds that the Savior was born, he gave them a way to verify the announcement. The shepherds decided to go and find for themselves the truth of the angel's claim. <coughs> We will light the candle of adoration. Let us sing Angels from the Realms of Glory, remembering the amazement of the shepherds when they found the Christ child just as the angel had said. Take a moment and greet those nearby. Welcome them in the name of Christ and pass the peace of our Lord along.
these gifts for your service. In the name of Jesus, amen. You may be seated. I want to, first of all, give thanks for all these beautiful poinsettias that are part of our worship, and there's a listing in your bulletin how they have been given in memory or in honor of loved ones, so we give thanks to the Lord for that. We've had many in the hospital and uh, out of the hospital this week. Um, Also, we want to have prayers for... uh, the Dahl family, their son Dennis has passed away, and um, Sarah Losey and had knee surgery and is recovering from that. Jen Gordon is recovering from gallbladder surgery, so I want to keep these in our prayers. Um, the word of the Lord from Luke, Simeon was a devout and righteous person waiting for the consolation of Israel. And he was in the temple looking continually for this revelation of God. And then it happened. Mary and Joseph came into the temple. And there Simeon saw the Lord. Who but the Lord was revealed to him at that moment. As we go to prayer, I want us to hear these words. Lord, let us... Now depart in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, a light for revelation and glory for your people. Let's pray. Lord, we humble ourselves in these moments, knowing that you're bringing revelation to us this morning, even in song and through your word and through the celebration of worship, you're, through your Holy Spirit are speaking into our hearts your truth of your Son, Jesus, who but the Lord could give us salvation, who but the Lord could bring us wholeness of life, abundant life, life that is worth living, who but the Lord can bestow his peace upon us, who but the Lord loves us the way he does, Who but the Lord, this precious child who's come to this world, who lived and died and rose again for our salvation. All that he has done, as the angel said, glory to God at the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. This morning we give you great praise and honor and glory. We are always looking for your consolation in our life. We welcome that now, Lord, through Jesus. We ask that this one who comes to bring light and revelation and glory would manifest that in our lives personally this morning. As we hear song, as we we, uh, worship you, we give you praise and honor and glory for that. Hearts go out to these who are recovering from surgery and and for... uh, have been in the hospital. Lord, we, we ask that your grace will continue to be sufficient for each need that they have. We thank you for the promise of your word that you are a God of comfort. We ask you to bestow that upon these, especially the Dahl family and the loss of their son. Envelop them with your, your grace moment by moment and day by day. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for revealing your love in Jesus to us. We want to pray the prayer that was taught us by him. So grant us the faith to believe these words and truly make them part of our life. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
East, the time is near of the crowning of the year. Make your house fair as you are able. Trim the hearth and set the table. People look east and sing today. Love, the Lord is on the way. We are in preparation mode. Beautiful decorations are lighting up the stores in many homes. 
We have been in places that have been playing Christmas music since at least Thanksgiving, if not late October, and we need to ready ourselves. But what does that mean? Do we find ourselves getting caught up in the busyness of the season? Is the tree trimmed and the stockings hung? Is your shopping finished? Is everything wrapped up with pretty bows? Is every Christmas party, school program, and event in the calendar on the correct day with the correct time? Are we waiting for more opportunities to arise so we can add them into our day planners and fill up every minute of the season? Then again, maybe you're on the other side of that. Maybe this year your heart is really heavy. Maybe someone you loved have gone home. Loneliness is creeping in every thought. The kids are too busy to come for a visit. It's just too much trouble putting up any decorations because you'll just have to take them down in a few weeks. So why bother? Why prepare at all? Our preparation needs to be much more. Advent is a season of preparing, but it doesn't mean preparing or not preparing our material homes. It needs to be more than hanging the lights and Christmas linens. We need to prepare our hearts for Christ to come and dwell.
we know Christ came into the world. He came as a child, born of humble birth, foretold by the prophets. We celebrate that every year, December 25th. So in our preparation, we know we have a deadline to be ready. December 25th, will that really be enough time to prepare ourselves? What if we prepared for the second coming? Will our waiting be like that of the people of Israel who waited for years? 700 years after Isaiah foretold the birth, Christ was born in Bethlehem. How long are we to wait for his return? Are we really prepared for that celebration? Who but the Lord knows when he will return? So we get ready. We prepare a room at the inn. Your heart is where Christ wishes to dwell. And Advent is a perfect time to make room in it for his presence. If your heart is filled with a stubbornness to forgive, it has no room for Christ. Take time to ask God to reveal to you any unforgiveness that exists in your heart. Remember that as God has forgiven you, you are also asked to forgive others. Who but the Lord can reveal the unforgiveness that lives within our hearts? Clean out the cobwebs. Make ready your room, your humble stable in Bethlehem.
Christ is born in Bethlehem. He has arrived. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. And the room of your heart is ready. Unforgiveness and cobwebs have been cleaned out. Now is the time to hang new curtains. Many of us fall into a rut in our daily lives and forget how to live in joy. Christ is light breaking through the darkness. Open your heart to him. Let him fill you. So throw out the old curtains of fear and despair and exhaustion and hang new curtains of hope and joy and anticipation. Share the good news. Be excited in the season. Anticipate beauty and laughter and joy. Seek it every day, everywhere you can. Who but the Lord can break through the sadness within us and fill us with a joy that won't stop. We shall light a thousand candles, dispelling the night with a glorious morn. We shall sing a thousand carols, proclaiming our wonderful Savior is born. We shall light a thousand candles, dispelling the night with a glorious morn. We shall sing a thousand carols, proclaiming our wonderful Savior is born. Tell it far and tell it near, speak of the Lord. Every nation needs to hear, Jesus was born to save us. We shall light a thousand candles, dispelling the night with a glorious morn. We shall sing a thousand carols, proclaiming our wonderful Savior is born. Go into the blinding night, sing of his great salvation. Take the glorious gospel light to every tongue and nation. We shall light a thousand candles, a thousand candles, a shall light candles for he is born. Get out the fine china and set the table. Company is on its way. We aren't doubtfully thinking that maybe he's going to drop by and thus we're only making superficial efforts to get ready. We are certain in our belief of his arrival and every cell in our body joyfully shouts, he's on his way. This is the time we get the fine china out of the cupboard. Our attitude is one of enthusiastic expectation. Our hearts pound in anticipation of his presence.
He has come from the highest heavens to dwell on earth among his people. He left paradise so that we could know him and have a relationship with him. He came of humble birth so that we aren't afraid to come to him. He came for us. Are we prepared? See, all that preparation takes effort. We can't sit on the couch or or at the coffee shop and expect change to happen by the snap of a finger. We have to want to prepare to change. We have to want to be ready for him to come and dwell in our hearts. It takes effort, and we certainly can't do it alone. The beauty of the preparation is that we don't have to do it alone. Christ has come. He can help us forgive. He can help us find light in the darkness. He hears our cries of despair and answers, here am I. He makes the blinded eyes to see, and he brings music to the deaf. We prepare for him with help from him. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. We can't do it alone, but we never have to. Who but the Lord? He is light and he is life. We are blessed indeed. Merry Christmas and amen.
Thank you, choir. Thank you, musicians, for taking us to the throne of the Lord, the manger of the Lord, the glory of the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah, friends. This was angelic, in a sense. Glory to God in the highest, 
and on earth, peace and goodwill for all. Who but the Lord provides all this? Who but the Lord accomplishes this in our life? Who but the Lord? Thank you for being here. Thank you for uh, witnessing this great celebration of, of joy. So as we leave this place, take the Lord with you and share him with others. Who but the Lord? Let's pray. Father, go with us now, and uh, we celebrate and give thanks for your glory in song today. Who but you gives us life hope, peace, joy. Thank you for that. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, amen. God bless you all.